Welcome to this short video about how to use the IP Summary page in Mainframe Team Center Network Management. The IP Summary page displays general information for the last hour about your IP network from the ZOS perspective. This information includes the overall throughput for a given system. This video will show you an overview of the IP Summary page. This page provides a big picture display that you can quickly glance over, so everything might be fine in your system and you can go about your day. However, if your system has some network issues and you received an email alert from the product, this initial glance can help you determine the cause quickly. For example, you received an email alert and you want to check the IP summary page. The system snapshot provides an initial overview of the last hour to someone who is familiar with the system. Keep in mind that this page is a good starting point and not a be-all and end-all. We can divide the IP summary page into two main sections, System Summary and Summary Charts. In the first section, you will view system summary information such as the most active application and the most active TCP port. You will also view information about the system protocol usage and your subsystem traffic. In the second section, Summary Charts, you can view more detailed information including IP throughput, application summary, TCP server port summary, and a few other summaries. You will see this information displayed in various graphical representations. This System Summary section gives you a quick snapshot about your environment. When you first access this page, you can select the system from the drop-down menu to view its data. If you have multiple stacks, you can see which stack is carrying the largest load. Clicking the Stacks link takes you to the IP Stacks page. You can see the throughput statistics over the last hour for the most active application, the most active TCP server port, the most active home address, and the most active remote network. These statistics include the inbound and outbound packets per second, the inbound and outbound bytes per second, and the total number of connections for each stack. For example, if the number of packets is much lower than expected, it may indicate some kind of slowdown in the stack or network. Depending on the values, the behavior might be normal in your environment. Your organization most likely has best practices about ideal throughput statistics. The connections column can also display the percentage of connections for the most active entity while comparing it to the total number of entities for the system. The most active application in your system displays. You can then see the most active TCP server port, the most active home address, and the most active remote network from all the stacks and its throughput statistics. Next, you have tables that show system protocol usage and subsystem traffic. The first table is system protocol usage. When an application requires a guaranteed delivery, such as DB2, CICS, or IMS, Almost all mainframe applications use the TCP protocol because TCP validates the receipt of all packets. Then, TCP notifies within the connection of any problems so that the other side can react accordingly. In this example, your system is using the TCP protocol more than 99% of the time and UDP and ICMP less than 1% each. Meanwhile, the system is not using the OSPF and other protocols at all. This behavior is normal in a mainframe environment. The second table is subsystem traffic. In this example, your DB2 accounts for only 7% of your usage, CICS less than 1%, and IMS and MQ are at 0%. However, you have other traffic which accounts for 93% of your usage. This other category includes TCP traffic, which is not done by DB2, CICS, IMS, or MQ, plus all traffic from different IP protocols such as UDP. For example, you might be using UDP for your Enterprise Extender, or EE, traffic, and this number would explain the large percentage of non-TCP traffic. Now, let's move to the other major section of the IP Summary page, the Summary Charts. The Summary Charts section provides several graphs that you can view, including summaries for IP throughput, application, TCP server port, home address, EE traffic, remote network, protocol, and subsystem details. Let's look at the IP throughput of the stack interface. You can view the total number of stacks and interfaces for that system, packet and byte rates, and the number of connections for that system. At this first data point, the total throughput was only 47.6k bytes per second. Ten minutes later, the total throughput increased to 459k bytes per second. Then two intervals later, another ten minutes, the throughput dropped down to 177k bytes per second. Keep in mind that each environment will interpret this data differently. For example, this data indicates that the volume is low, but it might not tell you anything about the speed. Now, let's look at the interfaces that have been running on your system. 
You can see the busiest application for that system, the packet and byte rates, and the connections for the busiest application as a percentage of the total for the system. In this example, DB2 is the first application in a list and it accounts for more throughput compared to the other applications. This behavior might be normal in your environment. If the amount of throughput in an application is too high, for example, you might have already received an alert from the IP monitor or alert monitor. After receiving this alert, you wanted to see the DB2 usage statistics. At this first data point at 9.15, DB2 combined for 1.16 megabytes per second. Ten minutes later, the DB2 application's usage went down significantly to 90.8 kbytes per second. Twenty minutes later, DB2 went up to 1.17 megabytes per second again, similar to our first data point. This example showed a minor fluctuation in usage. If you scroll down to the end of the page, you can see more details about the application's throughput for a specific five-minute interval across your entire system. In this example, DB2 had 64 active connections, which accounted for 15% of all active connections. You can also see additional inbound and outbound percentages for the packets per second and bytes per second. The world, travel, finance, and sales applications were the next applications with the largest number of connections, packets per second, and bytes per second. You can continue to view other summary charts in the second section. This example shows the subsystem summary chart. The statistics of TCP server ports for the specified system including the busiest port for that system, packet and byte rates, and connections for the busiest port as percentage of the total for the system. The monitored home addresses for that system including the busiest home address, EE traffic, remote network summary, protocol details, and subsystem details. This concludes the introduction to the IP summary page. In this video, you learned about how your organization can use this page to diagnose network issues, such as when you receive an alert and you want to drill down into specific data that the IP summary page provides for the last hour. You learned about how to use the general information in the system summary, the advanced information in the summary charts, and why you would want to use this information, such as determining which applications and TCP ports are the most active on your system. The system snapshot provides an initial overview to someone who is familiar with the system. You might take a quick glance and determine that your system is fine, and you can go about your day. However, if there's something seriously wrong with your system, this initial glance can alert you quickly. Keep in mind that all environments will differ. The information in these charts can be a good starting point and not a be-all and end-all. You can find additional CA Netmaster product documentation at docops.ca.com. Thanks for watching.